Hello everyone, I'm Tom Gnocchi. I'm the head of the EU office to Hong Kong and Macau. And I'm very pleased to talk about EU-Hong Kong relations on the uh, international channel of Bamboo Rock. Ambassador Tom Gnocchi is an experienced diplomat. He speaks Italian, English, French, Putonghua, and some Serbian. As a highly experienced diplomat, he's been posted in many politically sensitive places, including Deputy Head of Office in Kosovo for five years, Serbia, Beijing, and Vietnam. His personal style, thoughtful and careful, reflects European Union's more engaging and more outgoing foreign policy. He said those who are interested in EU's multifaceted relationship with China should look at EU-China, a strategic outlook, a paper published by EU in March 2019. But he still thinks Hong Kong is still very vibrant and there are lots of common interests between Hong Kong, China and EU countries. The EU and China just reached an agreement on the EU-China Comprehensive Agreement on Investment after seven years of negotiation. What are the implications on Hong Kong uh, when it's eventually ratifi ratified by EU Parliament? Well, um, first of all, yeah, this is a very important agreement for, for the European Union. Uh, uh, for European companies uh, uh, present in China and for f further companies who, who want to increase their presence in, in, in China. Um, it, uh, it increases the, the, the market access in a number of key fields uh, for European companies, including, uh, for example, financial services, cloud computing, the health services. So it's, so it's really... Um, uh, key for us. Uh, also, it has uh, quite far-reaching provisions in terms of uh, leveling the playing field, which is very important for us. Now, um, uh, given the role of Hong Kong uh, as being a gateway to a lot of uh, investment from Europe into China and vice versa, the, the, there will be uh, an important impact on, on Hong Kong as well. Um, so. Uh, Hong Kong is, uh, we, we estimate that over 60% of uh, EU investments to China uh, transit through Hong Kong, so there will be significant uh, uh, impact once it, is, once it is ratified and implemented. But this depends on, given the recent developments, um, which we, we find are regrettable, we, we have to see how the, the, uh, the situation evolves and, and it's it's related to the overall EU-China relationship. Well, what role do you think uh, Hong Kong might have, if any, in uh, helping to smooth out the uh, situation uh, and making the agreement with uh, EU-China investment agreement happen? I think um, the, 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 this agreement is, 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 hasn't been reached. Uh, the overall EU-China relationship uh, is, is, is extremely important and uh, within this EU-China relationship Hong Kong is, is, uh, figures quite prominently and the developments that have been taking place in, in Hong Kong um, uh, are having a, a, an impact on, on, on these overall EU-China uh, relations. So, um, and I think the, uh, we've made our position quite clear on a number of these uh, these issues, and they have uh, they have uh, uh, there has been quite a bit of concern in, in relation to these issues. So I don't think we can uh, uh, detach uh, detach the what's happening with Hong Kong with the overall uh, uh, situation uh, in, in EU China relations. So what are the changes? Uh you witnessed since arriving in Hong Kong in September 2020 and uh, the prognosis you have for EU-Hong Kong-China relationships? Well, I, I arrived soon after the national security law was imposed in Hong Kong and uh, at the time we were given assurances that the, 
the law would apply to uh, only a limited number of cases. Uh, instead, we've seen uh, the law having a fairly widespread, a widespread effect on different uh, parts of Hong Kong society. Uh, so this has been of concern to us. Um, on top of that, more recently, we've seen, we've seen changes not only in the criminal justice field, but, but also with the, the, the recent election legislation. And this has also been uh, of, of concern to us. So we've, we've seen, since I arrived, a uh, rather, rather negative evolution uh, uh, on, on about which we've uh, expressed uh, concern uh, because of the uh, what, uh, what we believe um, are the, uh, uh, the, the fundamental freedoms uh, which, which are, are guaranteed in Hong Kong. Uh, we feel these, these are going against uh, the, the, this, uh, uh, the, for example, what's in the basic law. Uh, and and we've, uh, we've, we've expressed our concern in this regard. Uh, what are the EU initiatives in uh, China and also in Asia, particularly uh, initiatives that are related to Hong Kong? Well, we, we have very wide-ranging uh, activities and cooperation with many countries in Asia. Um, the, uh, I think um, perhaps worth mentioning the, what we what was agreed on only the day before yesterday, uh, which was uh, uh, the need for the EU to uh, develop an Indo-Pacific strategy, uh, which, which means greater presence and involvement uh, in the Asia-Pacific and, and Indo-Pacific area more, more generally. Um, when it comes to China, despite some of the difficulties, I think we, we cooperate in many different areas. And that's the same for Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a uh, member of, uh, of the WTO in its own right. So we discuss things like uh, WTO reform with, with, with Hong Kong. So the, the, there is quite a wide ranging uh, agenda for, for topics to cooperate on. Mm. Personally, I actually had a long history of trying to bring uh, the Enterprise Europe Network to Hong Kong. Uh, this is actually the largest technology transfer network in the world with uh, 600 units, very large research units in 60 countries, including non-EU countries. And uh, this was a time when US-Hong Kong relationship was fine before uh, the uh, Hong Kong-US-China uh, Policy Act was suspended. Um, Enterprise Europe Network Hong Kong has not happened because there's really no policy support from uh, the Hong Kong SAR government. The question I would li like to ask is really, does the EU still treat Hong Kong as a separate custom territory and would welcome an, a, a EEN application from Hong Kong? Well, uh, f first of all, the Enterprise Europe Network, I think this is a, a very important program to uh, foster cooperation between companies uh, um, in, uh, working in the area of innovation and technology. So this is a very important uh, uh, program that we have and uh, it would be very good, as I was saying earlier, uh, the, the kind of cooperation we'd like to promote uh, to do that also through this program. So, so we, would, we, would, uh, we would welcome an, an application um, and I can also take, uh, take this forward in my contacts with the Hong Kong authorities. Uh, as far as your question on a customs uh, territory, we, we do consider uh, Hong Kong uh, as a separate customs territory. And as, it, as I said earlier, it, it is a, uh, uh, an example of this is uh, Hong Kong being a separate uh, WTO member or a WTO member in its own right. Um, but, uh, but yes, we, we, we would welcome a, an EEN application from Hong Kong. Uh, Ambassador Nyoki, any comment you would like to offer to Hong Kong on how to offer hope to the younger generation or any final comments you might have for our younger audience? 
Well, um, one of the uh, basic principles on which the European project is built is our attachment to uh, fundamental freedoms and human rights. So I think uh, uh, people in Hong Kong, including young people, should know that we will always stand up for these, uh, these, uh, these values. Um, as far as a uh, message to to uh, young people in Hong Kong, I think it's uh, I think uh, it's important to say that we we care deeply about Hong Kong. We w want to see Hong Kong thrive. Uh, we have very a very strong interest in Hong Kong. Uh, we have many many of our citizens, many Europeans, have uh, chosen to make Hong Kong their home. So so this explains why we we, we care care a lot about Hong Kong um, and, uh, and uh, for, for the future development of, of, of Hong Kong. Um, so, so this is, I think, in, in our interest uh, uh, and, and we, we have it at heart. Okay, thank you. Presumably, uh, freedom and uh, democracy under one country, two system. Yes, yes, definitely. The, this, this, I think, goes without saying that we, we, we support the one country, two systems uh, principle. Okay.